Hello, fellow music makers. This is Bill McFadden from Tone True Music. And in this video, we're going to get into the new features of Orb Composer. We have a new version out. And we the version is uh, 1.10. And the new features, we have chord inversions. We have loop markers. We have the ability to copy and paste clips and as well as chords. There's an updated AI engine and updating the curves automatically updates the clips and also a three eighths and a quarter time signatures have been added in the pro version. And there's also better humanization and there's a zoom in zoom out shortcut for Mac. And as well as you can double click on OC files, which will open them if Orb Composer is already open. So there are some known bugs currently being worked on time signature, signatures for individual bars and uh, clip input user rhythms, as well as harmonic doubling melodies. So I would stay away from those features until we have a report in, until the next update when those have been fixed. So for those of you who are not familiar and or need a refresher on how to use Orb Composers. The first thing you do when you open up the program is you choose what kind of an orchestral template you want. Now, if you want, you can hit cancel and then construct your own template. But just for sake purposes of demonstration, we'll go ahead and do an orchestral and then we'll apply because that gives you all of the AI features of Orb Composer at your disposal. Then the next thing you do is you add in what are called block items. So we'll do an intro. We could do a melodic intro. And we'll just drag that over. Also, we'll do a theme. And we'll drag that over. And then we'll go ahead and do an end. And we'll do a melodic end and drag that over. So the next step is to actually put measures into these structures. So we go down to the next tab on the upper left, which is the bar items. And since we're doing an intro, let's make it four measures. So number of bars, we'll go ahead and enter four. And then we'll go ahead and slide one of these bar items over. So I'll select this one here, which is basically four measures without any structure particularly. If you do a two by two, then you have the same structure for two, each of the two measures here. You have a question and answer. And here you have a question and answer for two bars each. So we'll go ahead and now drag the theme. Well, while we're at it, since we have a four measure bar, let's go ahead and slide that over to our ending. So we'll make our melodic ending four bars as well. And the next thing we'll do is we'll increase our bars to eight because we want an eight bar theme. So, and that enables us to slide over an eight bar theme. And when you select the, the statement here with without the question answer, it allows you to have eight independent chord chords for each of the eight bars if you so desire. So it gives you a little more flexibility in terms of chords. So, now that we have the basic themes and intro and end set up, then we can go ahead and populate. Now we have these options up here. This would create instruments and notes for all blocks. This would create chords for all blocks. We actually already have chords that were put in there by default, which we can change. This option allows us to create notes for all blocks and this does everything. So let's go ahead and uh, for the beginning, we'll just create uh, instruments and notes. So we'll let the artificial intelligence do its job. So by clicking on that, notice it's populated our, our intro theme and end with a couple of clarinets. We've got a lot of violins in here. We've got um, some horns. Here we have a bassoon, and again a bassoon. So. Let's go ahead and just play that and see what it sounds like from the beginning.
actually has a repeat icon here, so it just started to repeat. So that just goes to show you with doing really little else and choosing a structure and the the bar items, you could actually get a melody up and going very quickly. We did let it default to the defaults, the C major key, the time signature was 4, 4, 60 beats per minute. But of course, we could have altered that. And each of your blocks has its own capability, like our theme block. We have a tempo, we have a key, we have a time signature as well. And over here in the intro block, once again, we have a, a tempo, a key, and time signature as well. So, and the same is true at the end, just by clicking there, then those parameters become available. So you can tweak all of these things, which we've talked about in other videos. But we'll just sort of focus on the new features. One of the new features is chord inversion. So if I were to go, let's say, to the intro, we have a C chord. Here we have an A minor. Now if I want, I can double click on that and I can just do the first inversion. So with the C minor chord, in root position, you basically have A, C, and E, but if you have an A minor over C, basically you're going to first inversion, which would be C, E, A. So here I put in an inversion in the uh, intro. I could do another inversion right here. You can do an inversion anywhere you want. But let's go ahead and put another inversion right there. So there's a G chord. Let's do a G. So normally with a G chord in root position, you have your G, B, D. Here's your first inversion. Your second version has a D on the bass, and that would be your second inversion there. And so then we could go back and play and listen to the difference with the two inversions that were added in, say, in the intro. <laughs> So that's how you can go about entering <clears throat> inversions. One of the other new features is markers, loop markers. So we can drag this over, let's say to here, and then let's go back to the beginning of the melodic intro. So now we're looping just in the melodic intro. We can adjust that. So if we hit play, So as you see, it's just going to loop on that area there and close by the loop markers. So that comes in handy if you want to go and tweak some of the parameters in each of the tracks. Like, for example, here's a tuba track. And another sh shortcut, a new feature, if I click Command and the plus minus key, it actually zooms in. So we see that we have these parameters here, this is the dynamics. So it's double piano there. Also the function of this track is a background track, as we see. And of course, we've got the dynamics as we looked at the role, which in this case is background. You can increase the momentum, which is the number of horizontal notes per measure. And the, the complexity refers to the rhythmic complexity. The register, if you want a low register, high register, medium, or you can go up very low, very high. Polyphony. So in this case, we have four voices and then different chords, chord notes. Applies on certain kinds of tracks. Also for the violins, we see here we have a background track. So the role for this is a background. The dynamics are 
pianissimo, we have a rhythm, very low momentum, so very few notes per measure in the horizontal. And then complexity, the rhythmic, rhythmic complexity is average. The register is medium. And polyphony, polyphony four. So that would be up to four notes. And here is your viola track. So it's a melody track. So as far as dynamics, we have piano, rhythm. Momentum is low. Complexity is very low. Register in the medium register. For polyphony, you just have one note because you're doing a melody. And different chord notes doesn't apply. And that's just for the intro. So we have all of these options for each of the tracks and the other blocks as well. So, so far we've taken a look at the, the some of the new features, primarily the uh, chord inversions, which we adjusted here. Also, another new feature is the curves. Like here we're on momentum, let's switch to you intensity for this particular melodic intro block and let's play it and what i'm going to do is hit shift as i'm raising this up and that moves all four of these measures so listen to the difference so we see the melody increased intensity in terms of dynamics and if we go down here and wait a second so the new feature is these are interactive so as soon as you move them and you can if i hit control i can actually do a build so if we go back to the beginning of the intro So we see a gradual increase in volume as we progress through the four measures. So let's go ahead and take a, another look at the zoom in, zoom out feature. Now, as we saw, you can hit shift, or sorry, command, and then the plus minus key, and you will zoom in. And if you want to zoom out, you hit command and the key with next to the plus minus, or plus actually equals key with two minuses on it. And it'll zoom out. So if you have a lot of blocks, then you can get that about as small as you want. And then you also have the scroll bar, which lets you scroll through if you have more blocks. So that pretty much wraps up the tutorial on the new features in version 1.1. So this is Bill McFadden. If you like this video, please click like if you wish to subscribe and be notified of upcoming videos in the genre of film scoring. We talk about sample libraries, programs such as this uh, involving artificial intelligence, as well as theory courses, getting into harmony and chord structures and so on, all with the eye towards film scoring. So this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music, signing off.